Hello everyone. Today's video is going to be a little different again. I decided I wanted to do a video to show um, things I've learned through the years and that that isn't usually something somebody makes a video on, but might be helpful to you. This is just little tidbits of information. First, I would like to say though, if you're not a subscriber of mine, I would love to have you. And it's always very beneficial if you hit the like, if you like the video, or you comment on it. It really, really helps my channel to be promoted on YouTube. So thank you for those of you who subscribe and that like and comment. I appreciate it. It just helps me to be seen more often on here. And that's the whole point of making videos is to get to know you guys and helping as many people as I can help out on YouTube here. So let's get into the video. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is circles. I get asked this all the time. How do you find the center of a circle? Now the most easy way I've found is if it's small like this, or even if it's like a 12 inch, you can get a piece of paper that's the same size as your circle. And I just trace around it. Then cut this out. So now all you do is you take your paper and you fold it. Fold it in half and in half again. And then with it like this, I just snip off this corner, just a tiny bit. Now when you open it, you not only have your center cut out, but you have the first four lines for your, to keep things symmetrical. So a lot of times I'll just take like a pencil just so I can see where my lines are. And then I'll snip this up to that line. And just take a little notch out. Then when you lay it on here and line it up, you can mark your circle, and then you can mark these four points and draw your lines across. And you got it laid out perfectly on your circle. Easy peasy. Okay, the next thing I'd like to talk about is, on wood circles, is wood bleeding. Now, whenever I paint on wood, you always see me do this in my video. That's because I always seal the wood with this multi-purpose sealer. Because if you don't, it will bleed into the wood. Now let me get a paintbrush and just show you what I'm talking about. Oh, this is another thing. Before we do that. Alright, you see how it just came out clear? If your paint set... A lot of times they'll do that. So make sure you shake them or roll them. I usually do this a few times. And then when you put them in your palette, look at them. A lot of times you'll have like an oil residue sitting there. Make sure you stir that before you paint with it. Let me see if I got this one. I haven't used this one for a while. Yeah, it's not super oily. If it's oily, when you dot with it, your dot won't come out um, a perfect circle. It will, where the oil is in it, 
it will kind of separate and it won't look good. So make sure you shake your bottles, not too vigorously, because then you have to deal with air bubbles, but shake them a little bit and then make sure you stir them, especially if they've been sitting for a while. Now, let's get back onto this paint bleeding. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of paint here and I'm gonna just paint here with nothing. Okay, and now I'm going to add some sealer to this paint. And you don't need a lot, you just need a little. It's probably way more than I even need. And I'm just mixing the two colors together. It's gonna look ishy, but it doesn't matter if it's just for demonstration purposes. Now, I don't know if you could see, but what will happen is the paint will bleed into the wood and it will stretch out here. So say you're making um, a necklace or something and you want to leave the edges of your necklace a natural wood color. If you don't put a sealer, you'll get like this where it comes out. If you want a straight line, this is where my brush stroke is here, but like the straight line here, it won't go beyond that. Also, you could just paint the whole thing with sealer first. Don't put any paint on and just paint it with this first and then put your paint on top and it won't bleed into the wood because this protects the wood. So that's another thing to think about. Okay, say you don't paint a lot, you're just gonna do like a little thing like this, about this size or whatever. You don't wanna waste tons of paint there. That was one of my biggest pet peeves when I start, first started painting is I was wasting just a ton of paint all the time. If you just shake your bottle like this, you can open the lid and then when you open it up, you'll have paint on the inside. And as long as you're not gonna let this sit for like an hour, say you're just gonna do a few dots of that color, you could just use this and dot right out of this and then put it back on. It's just a way to conserve paint. But don't do it if you're gonna be working on it for a long period of time because acrylics dry really fast and so that's not good for your paint either. Okay, so say you're new and you got a whole bunch of cardboard you just cut out and primed with a color. Now if you make a design on here that you really like you could save this and make it into a magnet. And to do that, I always use art resin and I put it over the top. This is art resin. This is the stuff that you wanna get if you wanna protect your rocks for outside and that, so that none of the paint comes off and it's safe for the animals and stuff outside. This is also food safe. So if you put this on um, a dish or something you painted, you could put food in, eat out of it, and the paint or the resin will not leach into the food. This is what makes it food safe. Now say you're gonna make this, you're gonna resin over this, and you're gonna make it into a magnet. This E6000 is the glue that I always use. This will hold it like crazy. So any kind of magnet that you're gonna make I would recommend getting this type of glue. Comes in clear, comes in white, works fantastic. It's super sticky though, so be careful when you use it. Now, say you're going to make a rock and you want to put a piece of paper on the back. 
So why would you want a piece of paper? Well, this looks crappy because I was sanding it in that, but when I made my kindness rocks that I left around the hospital and that, I always put a little saying here, or if you are like in a member of a rock hiding group and you share your rocks and that, and you want people to be able to come back and post, an easy way to do that is just to print, print out these little labels and that to put on there. But the problem is when you put this on, if you just stick it on there and then you resin over the top of it, it will bleach into the paper. So to keep the paper looking clear, like a just a white piece of paper, instead of having like oil spots on it, I always put this Mod Podge on. So you can use this to, a lot of people use it to seal stuff, but it's not really fantastic to seal for outside. I wouldn't recommend using it. But this is just the paper Mod Podge. And I just put a little bit on the back. Well, make sure it's completely covered. And then push it down here and then paint over the top of this. This won't change it to look like oil. Just put a, a coat all the way over it. You could really gap it up on there if you want to. Let it dry and then when you resin over the top of it, it won't bleed into the paper. That was an important one for me because that drove me nuts. Let's talk about, now I call them swoops. They, everybody calls them different things. It all depends on who you talk to. But let's zoom in here a minute. Let's find my toothpick. Okay. Now, when I first started making swoops, I just tried to use my dotting tool like this. The problem with that is it doesn't have a round tip to it. Well, it does have a round tip but it has a round flat tip. So, let me get a bigger one. Like that, see, it's just flat. So if I take and I try and do a swoop and drag it out, it does okay. It, I mean, it's not great. Night and day difference was when I got what they call ball stylus tools, which is just this round tool like this. Now, if you take it and drag that one, it works a lot better. And if you need to have this extend a little longer, what I do is I dip two or three times, put the paint there, and then drag it out slowly, and it'll go longer. Now say, some people do those real fancy dots. I've seen them where they're curved all around and everything. How the heck do they do those? Okay, let's talk about that. Again, I'm gonna take my paint and put a pile there. Okay, so there's quite a bit of paint there. Now, if you get a pointed object, now it could be a toothpick, it could be, oh, I got various tools I bought off of Amazon. And this is like a dental tool. I think this one is like a dental tool. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'll put links to these in the description. But these are just tools I got to try and um, do smaller dots, but they work great for this, and so does a, just a regular toothpick. But you got your pile of paint there, and you just drag it with your pointed object. So say I wanna That one's it was already drying out on me because I waited too long, but let me do another one. Okay. Okay. 
but this way you can get them to go any direction you want them to go. So say I want this bigger dot. And this is all, you just need to play around with it to get the feel for it. And you could take this and say you just want this tail end to do that. Or you want it to go wider. You can get them to go any direction you want them to go if you just use a pointed object and move the paint around. It just takes a little bit of practice to get the feel for how to do it. Okay, so let's talk about dot placement. This is another thing, top dot placement that is. Okay, so now we're on to top dotting. Now, this is just to get you thinking. Now, I have two of these exactly the same that I painted. Now, you could do a normal top dot. Let's go on this smaller one. Okay. And dot right in the middle. Now, this also makes a difference. Like, if I used a lighter or darker shade of the pink instead of this contrasting color, it would look like a highlight on top of it, like it's domed up rather than a whole different color. Now, see what that looks like with them dotted in the center. Now, if you take your dots and instead of dotting in the center, you dot on the inside, closest to the circle, it is a completely different look. See what I'm talking about? And I've even dotted circles in circles. Just Something to think about as far as making the appearance of it look a little bit different. Another thing to worry about is, okay, if you have these kind of tools, this is the do-it-yourself mandala toolkit. I love these tools. I swear by these. These are fantastic. These are made out of like a plastic material. I don't know exactly what. I should have looked it up, but it's like a hard plastic. You cannot use baby wipes to clean these off. Now, I've had baby wipes sitting on my desk for years that I use to wipe things off with constantly. The thing I didn't realize is baby wipes contain alcohol. A lot of them do. And they will cause your tools to um, dry out and break. Not a good idea. Now, you could use baby wipes if you're using this type because this isn't going to hurt anything on the metal. But if you're using the plastic type or even like the wood, like a dowel rod or something, you don't want to use baby wipes. Just get yourself a wet, damp cloth with water on it and use that instead. I mean, let's talk about paints a minute. Now, one thing I didn't think about when I first started painting was different paint types. I used regular acrylics on everything. The problem is they don't work for everything. So, this regular acrylic paint, it's just basically a craft paint. It works on like paper, cardboard, canvas. Um, you could use it on wood and that if you use a sealer. But there's other things that you need to think about. So say you want to paint on glass. For glass, you're going to need either an enamel or a multi-surface paint. Because these paints, you either bake them in the oven or they self-cure after so many days. And that you just need to read the label. Most of them is like 350 for 30 minutes in the oven. But they say right on the label. Now, also, outside, if you're doing, like, terracotta pots and stuff, you need to use this kind of paint because this is made um, so the paint doesn't um, 
no it's 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 a porous surface so this will help to seal it as you paint now the only time I really use this is I use the terracotta saucers to make rain dishes and I'll use this for my base coat and then I use regular paint on top of it because I always resin over the top of the dishes so that when people throw keys in that they don't get ruined so those are a little bit about the different types of paints okay here's another little tip say you know you got your paint palette like this if you're just using um, regular acrylics paints, I just let them dry in here overnight. I, because when you go to wipe them out, it's a mess. If you let them dry overnight, you could just take a tool, any kind of tool. This is my stirrer. And get under it like that and basically just pick it right off see how it just pulls right off I just do that and pick them right out of there and it gets the palette perfectly clean underneath now again you're a new person and your paint is drying out too quickly for you. You put it in the palette and you mix some white in there and made the perfect color in that. And before you can finish making your project, it's dried out. And now you gotta try and remix it. I use this thing all the time. This is called the Stay Wet Palette. I got this at Michael's. And um, you can find them online too. I didn't leave it in the best condition, so sorry for that, but basically what this is, is it's a plastic container with an airtight lid, and it comes with, this is like, um, almost like a piece of felt, it's a spongy type material, and you get this wet with hot water, hot water? It's either hot water or cold water. The instructions will tell you. And this is all reusable. So you get this wet, and then it has these pieces of paper, which is a really thick piece of paper, and you get this wet, and you put your paint on it. And between the heat of this and the cool of this on the top, it'll keep your paints moist. And then when you're done for the day, if you put this airtight thing on, They'll last two or three days in here before they'll go where they're getting pasty and you can't use them anymore. But even this thing, I could go run it under water and like wash this off and reuse it yet. It comes with like five sheets of this and the sponge thing and then the container. And you could buy replacement parts of these. But I use this for like six months with no problem. And I still have the extra pieces of paper. I've only used the one. So this is a great option for somebody whose paints keep drying out on them. You can't find rocks where you live. Say you don't live by a beach or anything. You can always make your own. So this is a rock mold from the Happy Dotting Company. Well, all these are my rock molds from the Happy Dotting Company. And you can buy these um, templates that go over the top to mark. So you get everything even on there. She's got different sizes for different size stones and that. But these you just use Ultra Cal 30 and water. And you mix them. It's like a cement mixture. But um, it's part cement and part, uh, oh, I can't ever think of it. Plaster of Paris, that's what it is. And it makes a really nice rock. You could do that to make your rocks. Or if you don't have like a beach or anything where you could just go pick them up, 
my local landscape company. I bought these at a local landscape company. And they just let me go and pick out whatever I wanted. And they have beach stones and that there. They're harder to find round ones. But if you really take your time, you can find some really nice looking ones. And this whole bucket, it's hard to see because it's too close. But I mean, it's a decent sized bucket of rocks. It was like a dollar for all this. Really cheap. So go check out your local landscape company. I just called around and asked them if they allow me to do that. And they're like, yeah, sure, no problem. Bring your own bucket. And then lastly, the last thing I'm going to talk about today is different projects. Now, this I got at Joann's, but if you go to the dollar bill store, there is tons of objects there. This is just a little bowl. There's all sorts of things you can get. I got, these are magnetic clips. And they're plastic. So you could just pull this off, clean it off with Goo Gone or something, and dot on that and make your own mandala magnet. There is a plethora of options at the dollar bill store if you go there and check out what they have and you know if there's a magnet say there's a magnet that's got a saying on it you could paint over the top of the saying and do your own design on there i find a lot of stuff over at the dollar bill store that i use for various things well that's it for today I hope you found some of that useful. I had a whole lot more ideas, but I didn't get them down on paper, so there'll probably be more of these type of videos coming out soon. So if you have any other suggestions of what you'd like to see in future videos, or if you found something helpful, please comment below. I love to hear from you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.